Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the axilla or axilla, and we'll be looking at its boundaries and then a little bit of the basics of its contents. Once we cover the brachial plexus in a separate video or a couple of videos maybe, we'll come back to this concept and kind of look how everything fits in because we're going to look in a lot of detail at how the nerves go through the axilla and get to the different parts of the arms and then also the arteries there, how it branches and gets to different parts of the arm. Okay, so very basic overview here. We'll come back later, so make sure to look out for those videos when I get them up. So first of all, what is the axilla? Well, it's pretty much just the armpit. And scientifically speaking, it's a pyramid-shaped area between the arm and the lateral chest wall. Let's flip over to this picture right here. We can see that pyramid. And so up near the top at the apex, near the inferior surface of the clavicle, uh, it's very small. But as it gets toward about a third of the way down the humerus and its intersection here with the thoracic wall, it broadens a lot to its base. And what this pyramid is, or potential pyramid, I should say, is it's a space for nerves and blood vessels to travel as they go down toward the arm. Okay? So it serves as a passageway for the large nerves and vessels of the arm. So for example, the axillary vessel, so axillary artery, axillary vein, and of course their branches. And then also, we're going to have a lot of parts of the brachial plexus and their branches. So that's why we're going to come back and look at this in a lot more detail later and see how these things branch and get to various parts of the arm, but note that they're gonna be traveling in that axilla to get to the arm, okay? So let's talk about the boundaries of the axilla, boundaries of that pyramid. Well, from this, you can clearly see there's a small apex at the top, there's a larger base at the bottom, then we have an anterior wall, a posterior wall in the back, a medial wall closer to the thoracic cage, and then a lateral wall closer to the arm. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to look down on the apex. We're going to look down on the apex, so sort of like a cross section, a cross section like right here at the axilla, and we're going to look at all those borders. Okay? So that's what we see here. We're looking down a superior view of somebody's shoulder region, basically, okay? and we're specifically focused on the axilla. Here's that space right here. This space is going to be where those nerves and blood vessels are traveling. So here we have the anterior border in red, medial border is in green, you can probably tell that that's the thoracic wall because this looks like a rib to me, in yellow is the posterior border, and in blue here we have the lateral border. Okay? So first of all, the anterior border in red is composed of pectoralis major and minor, which makes sense because if you look at this picture right here, and just from intuition, we know that the pectoralis muscles are on the anterior surface of the chest. Okay, so pectoralis major and minor are going to be the anterior wall. Note that the pectoralis minor, which is the smaller muscle right here, is deep to the pectoralis major. So really in this central region right here, it's actually going to be pectoralis minor. But flanking that on either side, it's going to be mainly pectoralis major. Now in green here, we have the medial border. The medial border is composed of the serratus anterior, but also a little bit of the thoracic wall, especially... Um, anteriorly up here. But notice that as we get to this point, we see that the serratus anterior is composing most of that medial border. But in general, it's the serratus anterior and the thoracic wall. Posterior border. Posterior border is composed of subscapularis, teres major, and latissimus dorsi. Now, when we're looking at this scapula right here, the posterior part of the scapula is not actually facing the axilla. So posterior part of it are going to be, of course, uh, infraspinatus and teres minor. But the anterior rotator cuff muscle, which is facing this axilla, is going to be su uh, subscapularis. And then we're going to see a little bit of teres major and latissimus dorsi because they're actually, as you can see right here, their insertions are actually going to be on the medial lip of the intertubercular groove of the humerus. If you look at this little groove here on the humerus, this is the intertubercular groove, also called intertubercular sulcus. Okay? This is actually going to be the insertion of long head biceps brachii. But on the medial lip of that intertubercular groove right here, we have the insertion of teres major and latissimus dorsi. So that's going to help make up part of the posterior border. 
Also note from before that the pectoralis major inserts on the lateral lip of the intertubercular groove. See that right here. And then the lateral border is really going to be composed of the humerus, coracobrachialis, and long head of the biceps brachii. It's really going to be the intertubercular groove, but because the long head of the biceps brachii sits in that groove, we consider the long head of the biceps part of that lateral wall. And then also there's going to be a little bit of coracobrachialis, because the coracobrachialis is going to actually insert on the coracoid process, which is going to be kind of in this area over here. So depending on what level of the cross-section you're looking at of the axilla, you might see some of teres major and latissimus dorsi, or you may see coracobrachialis composing the lateral wall. Okay. Now for the apex and the base. The base is going to be at the bottom. That's just going to be axillary fascia. Okay? Not really much to that. And that axillary fascia is going to be deep to the skin, um, that you can obviously feel when you palpate your armpit. And one of the things about that base is that's actually more or less where you put the crutches, axillary crutches, when you, you know, have a broken foot or something like that. And one of the things they say with axillary crutches is you're not actually supposed to lean your weight on your armpit. And the reason is because in that axilla, you have all of those blood vessels and nerves, and you can actually cause damage to them, which can impair functions in your arm. So you're actually not supposed to lean all your weight on the armpit on the crutch. Anyways, that's just an aside. But the base is composed of the axillary fascia. The apex up here, which is really small, look what we can see in this area. We can see the clavicle, we can see a little bit of the scapula, and then of course the first rib is right here. Here's the first rib, here's the second rib a little bit below. So what is the apex composed of? The clavicle, superior border of the scapula and the first rib. Okay, So again, we've got the clavicle, superior border of the scapula is kind of right here, and then we've got the first rib over here. That really composes more or less the apex. And that apex is going to be where those blood vessels and nerves enter the axilla, and then as those blood vessels and nerves go through this axilla, um, they're going to really just get into that arm region um, at different levels, but they're all going to get in there. But the axilla is really just a space here for all those blood vessels, so like axillary artery and vein and its branches, and the brachial plexus and its branches to really get into the arm and supply all the tissues that are in there, especially the muscles. Okay? So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the axilla, its boundaries, and some of its contents. Like I said, in future videos, we'll go into this in much more detail and see all the branching that we have for like the brachial artery. We'll see all the blood vessels and parts of the brachial plexus. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.